Hey guys, in the last video on my 1973 Cushman Traxxter, we took a look at the charging coil and we didn't really find any major problems with it. Let's take a look at the magnets on the flywheel and see if that's why we're not getting enough energy out of the charging system. Thanks for watching. Well guys, I put a little bit more thought into uh, this charge situation that we have. I was hoping that we were going to find some smoking gun with the uh, with this charge coil, you know, a massive short or a broken wire or something that was going to cause this to uh, to not be generating full power. And uh, I think we can safely say that there was no real major damage. A little bit of a ding, a little bit of a wear, and uh, by sealing things up the way we have with the liquid electrical tape, I think we've uh, dealt with those issues. But I don't think that that was the root cause of our problem. I think what we've got going on here is this. This is the flywheel off of the Traxxter. And uh, they use the same thing on, well, it's basically the whole engine is the same as what OMC was using on the Evinrude Snow Skeeter, the Johnson Ski Horse, and the uh, the Snow Cruiser. Uh, I've got a Snow Cruiser engine out in the garage that's basically the same setup as this. Uh, and the way the charge works, of course, this would be fixed as opposed to rotating. But basically speaking, you can see how it stuck in place. We've got magnets all the way around the outside and they certainly don't feel weak but you can kind of see I've marked the ends of them here so there's a magnet a magnet uh, and so on around and what we can do is we can measure how much strength we've got in the magnet what I have here is called a gauze meter we'll turn the light on the screen hopefully you guys can actually see that and it measures in milli Teslas or if we go to it's in uh, I think Tesla's now I'm guessing that a Tesla is a unit of magnetism as well as being a rather nice electric car what I'm gonna do is try and set up the camera here and we'll see if we can put some kind of quantity on what kind of condition the magnets are in in this flywheel and uh, I haven't even tried measuring this yet, so I don't know what the results are going to be. We'll uh, learn this together. I've taken a bunch of measurements. And what I found, uh, the magnets aren't quite laid out the way I thought they were. Each magnet that I've numbered, one through six, has a polarity. And if you measure both ends, if you're very careful to stay on the end of the magnet, find the, the point of greatest magnetism, then you get the polarity for that uh, magnet. Also, if you just touch in the middle, it, it uh, selects the polarity on the screen as well. So magnet one, we had a uh, polarity of south. It's got 20 on the left-hand side and 52 on the right. And I would feel much, much better if we had 52 on both ends. And you can see that we've got several other tests that were down in the 20s. And then we got one that's 13.4. That's pretty bad. What we can do, we've got the neodymium or neodymium magnet here. And according to the meter, I've got the ends marked north and south. So in theory, if we take that number six, which is north, so from here to here is a north, and we rub. I'm not sure if rubbing the north on there is the right move or rubbing the south on there is the right move. I think we should be sticking the south, the opposite pole, on here, and we'll rub it back and forth. Give it 30 seconds or so. So now, where we were 26, we're at 47. And where we were at 13, we are at 26. So let's try that again. 
I'm going to do that all the way around and I'll take a fresh set of tests because hanging on to this magnet I definitely need both hands and uh, I will bring you guys back when I've got the fresh round of numbers for us to look at. Well guys, I have uh, I've run the magnet around on all of these and uh, I did get a fairly decent improvement all the way across the board. Uh, what do we got here? It looks like our 41 is our, oh sorry, a 30. But that was our 13.4. I think if I went at it a little bit more I could probably get that 30 to come up again. This 41 was really challenging. Um, I got it marked the fifth magnet on the right hand side and uh, I had to go with that three or four times before I could get any noticeable uh, improvement out of it and um, definitely it is a lot better now than it was. Um, some of these really were impressive the way they uh, they went up. We got you know 61, we got 39 to 63, uh, 31 to 55, nope 22 to 52 that's a, a 30 point increase or 30 milli tesla increase that's that's pretty good uh i'm hoping this is going to fix it i'm going to go with this uh number six magnet just a little bit harder see if i can get that number up into the 40s or maybe even into the 50s and um hopefully this is going to have uh an effect on how much charge we're getting out of this. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to leave it sit for 24 hours and I'm going to test it again because rubbing a uh, rare earth magnet over top of these uh, iron magnets, yes it's making an immediate improvement right now but before we close the video out I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours and then I will uh, try again. We'll see uh, see if these good numbers are staying. If they are, then this is a good uh, good experiment, and it's definitely cheaper than replacing the flywheel. Uh, this was like a, this was like eighty bucks, and I think the magnet was like fifteen or something like that. And I didn't get a price on a used replacement flywheel, but I can guarantee you that it probably is going to be a couple hundred bucks. So. If we can make our old existing junk work, why not? Anyways, I'll bring you guys back for a closeout uh, in 24 hours. We'll retest this and see how the uh, numbers are, are holding up at that time. Well, guys, here we are 24 hours later, and I've learned a few things. First of all, I wasn't testing right. But to keep it apples to apples comparison so that we're... Uh, we know that we're looking at the same thing. I'm going to measure the magnets the same way that I measured them yesterday. Then I'll show you how to do it right. So we're going to start off um, with one. We're showing 57, 58, and that's what we were showing after we recharged. And we're showing eh, 60. I don't know whether you guys can see that screen or not. Yeah, give or take, we're right around the... That was showing a 60. Where'd it go? I've seen a 60 testing that. So we were at 66. So that is down a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, next one is a 63. And 64, we're pretty good there. The other end, we were at 51, now we're at 52. We were at 63 last night, we're at 65 today. Fifty-two, fifty-two, fifty-three, that's good. 
This one was 52 or 53, 54 now. This is num magnet number five. After our test, we were 42 and now we're showing 67. Okay. And this one is uh, the one that I've had an asterisk beside. It was uh, 41 and now we're showing 52. This one was 42, now we're at 58. And 57. Okay. So everything's pretty much better or close to what we were when we tested it last night after recharging things. Why that is, I don't know. Other than I have noticed that we get different numbers if I rotate the probe a little bit. And here's the real reason why these numbers don't necessarily mean anything. That's just a cap. There's the probe. So we're supposed to put this down beside the magnet. And if we put it right at the end, that's number five, which that was the one that we struggled to get 41 out of. And as you can see, we're up well into the hundreds. The other end of number five. We're in the 90s. Now I got to be careful. This is just a thin fiberglass circuit board. It would be easy to break. Six. We're... Yeah. 98 to 105, 115. So taking this off and exposing the probe directly to the magnet is definitely increasing our uh, magnetism. So I don't know whether that means that this flywheel was weak. Yeah. 13.4 was definitely a, a weak measurement. 26, definitely a weak measurement. But what would those have been if we had had the, the tip exposed? Probably they would have been higher. I think we've got a good flywheel here now. I think the uh, neodymium or neodymium, however you say it, neodymium magnet has recharged these uh, metal magnets that are in the flywheel and hopefully we will get decent voltage out of that. That's going to be for a separate video though. Thanks a lot for stopping by. You know, one of those thumb up things if you've uh, got this far in the video and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next mess. Oh hey, why don't you hit that uh, subscribe and maybe ring that bell icon and don't forget there's merch listed in links down below if you want to support the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you in the next mess.